welcome to Become Limitless. I'm JP, I'm your host, and today I'm incredibly excited. We're going to do something powerful together. This is one of the most important pillars to become limitless, and it is to activate the full potential of your mind. This is not an easy feat, but I'm going to be sharing everything that I've done during the last five years, personal stories and lessons on how I've been able to achieve this and how you can achieve it as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Super excited. Let's do it. Number one, this is probably the, the thing that started everything. So the first thing that I did to unlock the full potential of my mind was to realize that my mind was always in the future or in the past. So I wasn't living my life in the present moment. I was always caught up and stuck in my head. And so the first step to unlock the true potential of my mind was to become aware of this pattern so that I can consciously choose to break it and come back to the present moment. And this served me in so many ways. Let's talk about some of the benefits. Being more present helped me tremendously, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Because as soon as you stop putting all of your attention and your energy in the future or in the past, you can use that energy fully for the present moment. You can take more action. You can have more clarity. You are more present with your relationship, with your business partners. And so all of the areas of your life get amplified. I was able to optimize all areas of my life when I became more present. And I said, you know what? Mind or my inner voice that was always tricking me into going into the future or the past. I am the master here. I am the master of my life. I'm the master of my mind. And I'm going to make a conscious intention every single day to be present and to break that old pattern that has had too much momentum in my life. It had been driving me crazy. I was so stuck in my mind that I had this crippling anxiety that turned into a chronic tension in my back. So imagine when I was 20, this happened for about three years or so, I was going to sleep. Like my mind wouldn't shut up ever. So 24 7, I was listening to 90% of negative thoughts of like how I said something that I shouldn't have said, of how people might think bad about me, that I was inferior to them. And so this crazy monkey mind just kept going and going and going. And imagine how that affected my nervous system and my physical body to the point where I was waking up and instantly my mind would start thinking and overthinking. It's almost like I didn't have a break. And when I woke up immediately, I already had a chronic back pain. And this got so uncomfortable that I got to the point where it was like such a big nudge that it was driving me crazy. And I started trying everything. I started to meditate. I started to go to the gym. I stopped drinking coffee. I stopped going out and drinking alcohol. And so I started to take more responsibility over that. But the thing that helped me the most, that moved the needle forward, was to consciously become aware of how many times a day my mind was taking me into the future. Let me give you a really funny and easy example to understand. Whenever you're eating, let's say that you're going to a very fancy restaurant and you sit down, you have a delicious meal. But let's say that you're in the main course. What is your mind thinking? Most of the times it's probably already thinking about dessert. So it's almost like you're not able to enjoy life and enjoy that main course because the mind is tricking you into, oh, wow, the dessert is going to be so delicious. But then you're missing out on this moment. And then when you're in the dessert, the mind might think about coffee. Okay. And it's like, okay, wow, that coffee is going to be so good. But then you're missing out the deliciousness of the dessert. And you can apply this framework and you will see, you can verify this for yourself. This can happen with your work, with your relationships, just with your everyday life. But if you become aware of it, you'll know that your mind is always taking you out of the now. And I'll tell you why that is. 
it's because you can really tap into your confidence and your true power when you're fully and deeply present and grounded in the here and now. But the mind is super afraid of the present moment because that is the kryptonite of the mind. When you're present, when you're fully here with me as we are right now, your mind cannot think. You cannot be present and be thinking at the same time. And this was one of the things that really gave me my power back. And it was something that I had to do over it and over it. every single day. It was almost like a battle, an internal battle that I had to do for years. But I was so committed because I was so pissed off that my mind had been running my life and I was in, in an automatic pilot that I said, you know what? I'm not going to let this happen anymore. I'm going to take, I'm going to go fully into it. I'm going to go into this war, into this battle. And every single day, I'm going to be present. I'm going to be the observer. And I'm just going to hold that knowing and come back and anchor myself in the present moment. This is very similar to how a boat, whenever it's close to the beach, right? We need to anchor that boat to the bottom of the sea because if not, the current is going to take it and wash it away. And that's exactly what we do when we break this pattern of the mind. When we're fully present, we're anchoring ourselves here and we don't allow ourselves to be taken in by that madness of the overthinking, the anxiety, what are they going to think about me? All of those problems are rooted in the mind. The mind is fear-based, is based on survival mechanisms. So break this pattern and you're going to feel so much freedom. You're going to feel limitless in your potential, especially in your mind. Step number two that I took to unlock the full potential of my mind was to cultivate my self-awareness on a daily basis so that I didn't fall into my old patterns and the stories that I kept telling myself to keep myself in the comfort zone and also keep being the victim of life. It's actually easy, and this might trigger you if you're still caught up in this pattern. It's really easy just to blame others. It's easy to blame external circumstances for your own life and how that looks like right now. Even if you're successful, maybe there's something deep within you that is still making you feel unfulfilled. It's easy to blame that externally. But that's just the mind sending you old stories and old patterns so that you keep repeating them. And so the first step to change and to really be able to break free from the mind so that you can unlock your full potential is to stop believing everything that your mind says. Because as you become aware of your old patterns, those old cassette tapes that have been running in your mind maybe for years of how life treated you this way or how your parents made you have this trauma or this belief, and then now you're not really successful in an area of your life specifically. The first step to tr true change and transformation is to stop believing those old stories. You can check in with yourself and see what are some of those old cassette tapes that have been running for years that I need to let go of that are not serving me to my highest good? It's all about expansion and contribution and evolution. If there are stories within your mind, that inner voice that is telling you those stories that are keeping you stuck or playing small or not really fulfilled and happy, you need to make a decision to let them go so that you can become the best version of yourself and you can expand in all areas of your life. Step number three to unlocking the true potential of my mind, this goes hand in hand, we're kind of building up the foundation is, I deeply realized that I wasn't my inner voice. What do I mean by this? The majority of our lives, we believe that we are this voice that we talk to ourselves, even when it's critical, if, even when it's nice and funny and friendly. The majority of our lives, we think that we are this inner voice that we listen to because we're like stuck in our heads and we just listen to and the, the inner voice gives you opinions. And it's like giving this unnecessary commentary 99% of the time when you're reading, when you're doing dishes, when you're walking. If you think about it, 99% of what the inner voice says is really unnecessary. You don't need this thinking to operate in your life. 
but our identity, it's so stuck and blended with this inner voice that we mistake this inner voice for who we truly are. And let's pause for a second with that, because when you realize that you're not your voice, when you realize that that little voice in your head is just a phantom, it's just an old conditioning from your past, you realize that that voice, it's always speaking to you from the past, from your upbringing, from your values that you had in the past, from your beliefs. But what if you are a different person now? You're still getting tricked into those old behaviors and from those behaviors, you actually act. So having this realization is incredibly important. And let's do a quick exercise so that you can verify firsthand to have proof that you are not the inner voice. To do this, just pause. If you're listening to this podcast driving, don't do this while you're driving. But let's do a little experiment together. Let's arise. Make sure you're sitting and you're not doing anything else. And just say mentally the word hello. Just say hello, hello, hello. And I want you to imagine that you're sitting in a movie theater and you're watching this word in, in a blank screen. Okay, so every time it comes up, I want you to become aware of it and just listen to that voice that says hello. Hello. So you're in a way creating that own inner voice. And once you've done this, here's the crazy part. If you were that inner voice, if you were your thoughts, you wouldn't be able to listen to that thought. You wouldn't be able to become aware of that word hello, of that inner voice, because there has to be something else apart from the thoughts, apart from the inner voice in order for it to be aware of. And what I mean by this is there is an observer and there is the thinking, the thoughts. So you are sitting in this movie theater and you can actually become aware of the inner voice and you'll realize that there's something weird going on. You are not really the inner voice because you wouldn't be able to observe the thoughts and you can actually do that. That's actually one of your skills. So you can sit with this. This is a seed that might be planted now and then it grows later. We'll start playing around with that idea, knowing that there's something else that is becoming aware of the thoughts. Again, if you were your thoughts and that is the only thing that existed, then you couldn't really become aware of them. So there is something bigger, your essence, your presence, that is way more powerful than this little thinking voice that we think it's our intellect and our wisdom. You're way, way more than just your inner voice. So I'll leave that as it is for now and we'll move on to the next step. Step number four, I discovered a tool that allowed me to drop into altered states of consciousness. And what this means is your mind is like a radio station and it can tune into different frequencies. You have the beta frequency, which we are right now, if you're active listening and you're awake, you're in the beta brainwave frequency. But if you meditate or you induce yourself into a deep relaxation, your brainwave frequencies will actually drop down into alpha. And if you spend some time in that deep relaxing state, you're actually going to drop into theta. And so these are altered of your mind that maybe you didn't even know they existed. When you go to sleep, you're in delta. That's the lowest frequency of the brainwave. You're completely asleep, unconscious, and you might be dreaming, but the brainwaves, the frequencies are really, really slow. So when you wake up the next day, you go from delta, completely asleep, to theta, which is a deep state of relaxation where you can really absorb new information and you can reprogram yourself. Then you go into alpha for a little bit and then you go into beta, which is your waking state of mind. This is really important because if you have a tool that allows you to drop at will into alpha and theta, you can tap into these altered states of mind that allow you to connect with your intuition, that allow you to connect with your inner wisdom and your inner voice. But also, you can do this and you can visualize outcomes. You can reprogram and brainwash your brain. You can 
uninstall old programs, old beliefs, and you can install new empowering beliefs. And that is because Jose Silva, which is the pioneer of this mind science, he discovered that when we are in beta, our brain, there's a lot of resistance. And I connect this to the inner critic, to the mind and the ego, the crazy monkey mind that is always active. It's creating so much resistance in our brain, like electrically as well. There's so much energy that's being consumed by that crazy monkey mind. So he discovered that when you drop into alpha, that resistance decreases and the inner critic in a way hits a pause and your thoughts, they quiet. And when your thoughts quiet, a whole new world arises from within you. And this is really, really tapping into the full potential of your brain because now you have access to downloads. You have access to intuition. What if you need to be really practical? You need to make a life-changing decision in your life or in your business. What if you could drop down into alpha in a matter of 60 seconds and you can connect with yourself and ask for intuition and receive the answer? This can be so useful for your business, for your life to increase your performance and expand yourself as well. When you drop into alpha, the resistance is almost gone. And so that means your body can rest and repair automatically. You let go of the resistance, which creates stress and anxiety and tension and this nervous tension that we carry around most of the day. We can actually relax and let our bodies activate their own self-healing mechanism. So now we are working holistically on a holistic framework by using your mind and dropping into alpha, you allow your body to heal itself, to replenish and revitalize itself. So I'm probably going to have today to make an episode just on alpha and these different brainwave states and the benefits. But this is truly been one of the greatest tools that I've learned that have really tapped me into this full potential of my mind because I've also used this for visualization. Like if you go into alpha, it's really easy to visualize and you can see different outcomes happening. You can see your day going in the most successful way and you can win the day in a matter of minutes before you start it and then things magically start to come your way. The day seems to be always in your favor and then different opportunities and people and things that you've been wanting, that you've been wanting to create in your life, they start to appear. And this is almost like using your brain to create magic, to manifest things that you want in your life. If you want to know more about how to drop into alpha, I'm going to drop a link in the description of this video that is going to take you to a recording that I did that is going to guide you into alpha in a matter of minutes. It's really, really fun. You'll have it in the description. Next step of how I unlock the full potential of my mind, I committed to nourishing my mind, my body, and my soul on a daily basis. And this is a big one that takes commitment. And I really committed to being consistent and having the discipline to spend at least the first 20 to 25 minutes of my day doing daily rituals like breath work, like alpha meditations that we talked about in the last step. These things that allow me to be in the most amazing state to start my day. So I prime myself, my mind, my body, and my soul before I started my day. And this really expanded the possibilities of my mind. I started to feel more confident because when you optimize your state, your mind also benefits. That's why we are talking about this from a holistic approach, right? If you optimize your body, if you do breath work or you do push ups or yoga, and you feel so good physically and emotionally, your mind is also going to be optimized and you're going to feel incredible for the rest of your day. So committing to a daily rising routine, it doesn't have to be three hours. Even if you do 20 minutes where you can spend five times, five minutes meditating, five minutes going into alpha and tapping into your main goal for the day or visualizing an outcome, or doing some stretching or exercise, 
these are different things that are going to create holistic well-being and aliveness and confidence in your state. This is going to allow you to have more clarity in your thinking, to think in bigger and bigger ways, and to dream bigger so that you can achieve bigger ultimately. Next step in the journey to unlocking the full potential of my mind is I went on a journey and I discovered how to reprogram my subconscious limiting beliefs. As I went deeper into my personal development journey, I started realizing that the key to permanent transformation, if I wanted to really shift my identity, was to work directly on my subconscious mind. So my conscious mind was about 5% of me and my subconscious mind was about 95%. I started reading and experimenting and realizing that the subconscious mind held all of my memories from the moment that I was born. And so if I really wanted to change and expand the limitless potential of my mind, I needed to shift my beliefs on a subconscious energetical level. As my journey began, I started reading books. And funnily enough, I got to tell you, it wasn't easy. There's not really many things out there that allow you to release old limiting beliefs and reprogram new empowering beliefs instantly. That's what I was really looking for. It's a system or a methodology or a tool that would allow me to confirm that I was successful in releasing old limiting beliefs, but also in installing new empowering beliefs. And so I really wanted to know what were even my limiting beliefs. I've been like super curious to know because back then I had a lot of fear of rejection. I had this big inferiority complex. And I remember when I discovered energy medicine toolkit that I started using and I started doing muscle testing, which allowed me to identify my limiting beliefs. And I said, you know what? Why don't I try to discover my top five limiting beliefs word for word? So I was doing muscle testing and I was using this chart that had like a hundred limiting beliefs. And I remember like I have such a, a hunch and a feeling that these are some of the beliefs that are going to come up. And I muscle tested, tested them, I extracted them. And funnily enough, the, the top two or three limiting beliefs were I remember very clearly the first one or the second one was, I will be rejected. The second one was, I'm not as good as others. And the third one is, I am inferior. This makes so much sense because I could see how those limiting beliefs were really the root cause of the suffering, the social anxiety that I was feeling. Like every time I would speak to a friend to send even a voice note, my voice would go really, really shaky and I felt insecure, I felt lost, I felt unsafe and my nervous system would get triggered and I would start getting worried. And I was like, what is going on here? And then it makes so much sense that that was the effect of a deeper root cause that eluded me for the majority of my life. But now I had identified, I said, I got you now. And it was these limiting beliefs of I will be rejected, I'm not as good as others and I am inferior. So you can imagine how when you have those deep-seated limiting beliefs on a subconscious level, that's in a way a seed that then starts to grow different branches and leaves. And that affects your behavior, your emotions, your thoughts. We have negative automatic thoughts. I discovered this is really funny. When I had those limiting beliefs, I always used to have these automatic and negative thoughts or obstructive thoughts that just made me feel really bad about myself. So let's say I send a voice note to a friend. Immediately, my mind would start thinking. It started literally looking for something bad that I said or something to make me feel and second guess myself. It was almost like I was addicted to this. And it started to look and look and look. And all you see, it, even if there wasn't anything, it found something to kind of latch itself around and it started repeating that and repeating that and repeating that. My mind was saying this, wow, I shouldn't have said this. I'm so dumb. I'm so stupid. I shouldn't have said this. What's this person going to think about me? Holy shit, I'm feeling anxious and stressed and, and feeling really, really bad about myself. But then I realized that when I worked on those limiting beliefs 
and I actually discovered the tools that would really, truly allow me to release those old limiting beliefs and install new ones, I not only saw a shift in my emotions, but also on my thinking. Because with new beliefs, you have new ways of thinking, new beliefs, new feelings, new behaviors, ultimately. Everything starts from that foundation of what are your beliefs and core values about your life. So if you really want to unlock the full potential of your mind, you also have to go deep within your subconscious and reprogram old limiting beliefs into new empowering beliefs. Imagine the frequency, the potential, the unlimited possibilities of your mind when you start to let go of these layers of old conditioning and limitations, because that's what they really are called. I like to call them subconscious limitations. When you release these subconscious limitations, your mind expands in incredible and limitless ways. Why? Because you start believing your wildest dreams. You start believing that you can achieve bigger and better dreams. And I like to call this becoming limitless in your ability to achieve. Because whatever goal you set yourself up to, your mind and your subconscious are no longer in misalignment. There's not a a deep-seated belief that says, I'm not good enough for this goal. I don't deserve this. When you clear that at a subconscious level, your conscious mind and subconscious mind are aligned and you're like, bring it on, baby. I'm ready to pursue this because I know that I deserve it. I know that I'm worthy. And the thoughts that come into you, that inner critic that you had before, in my experience, it was transformed into my best friend. It was like, instead of having these negative thoughts in my mind, I was able to expand them to the point where I had this incredible partner and best friend that always had my back, that was telling me, you can do this, JP, you got this. You deserve this. You deserve bigger and better things. And so it was always about expansion and reaching new heights and new levels. But everything starts by believing that it was possible. And this is what I discovered in my own experience. And that's why I want to share it with you because we are holistic, complex human beings and we need to look at the whole. We cannot just look at the parts of the puzzle. We need to look at every single step of the way. The last step that I did to unlock the true potential of my mind was that I brainwashed myself by going into alpha. So learning about the brainwave states, I learned how to go into alpha so that I could be open and receptive to new ideas and beliefs. And I brainwashed myself for success, for success in all areas of my life by using different affirmations that I listened while I was in alpha. And what I was really doing is I realized that when we install new beliefs and we want to expand the ways that we think, and if we want to think bigger and bigger and bolder, and we want to dream bigger and achieve bigger, we have to go down and drop down to the level of our identity, our self-image. This is what dictates everything, right? So in the previous step, I talked to you about how I reprogrammed, I uninstalled old limiting beliefs at a subconscious level, and I installed new empowering beliefs at a subconscious level. But then that's 50% of it. The other 50% is to brainwash yourself for success with different affirmations and going into alpha because this eventually gets to your identity. Like that's ultimately what we want when we shift our identity. When I shifted who I was being, my thinking, my entire being, my state, my mind, my body, and my soul, they all responded to that change because I shifted myself at the deepest level of my being. And this is what's really missing in a lot of the programs that I see out there in a lot of the transformational work. They're missing this ripple effect of first creating true and permanent change at the level of the identity so that then that can ripple into your core beliefs, into your thoughts, into your emotions, and ultimately that creates a ripple effect into your actions. That is the whole puzzle. 
And so I knew this, I discovered how to do this, which I'm, I'm sharing with you right now. The only thing you need to do is you can listen to the recording that I linked in the description. And when you drop into alpha, you'll feel very relaxed. You'll feel open to receiving new ideas. And then you can record yourself with different affirmations for different areas of your life. So if you want to become wealthier or you want to become healthier or an incredible relationship, or if you want to work on your self-love and your presence, whatever it might be, record yourself with these affirmations and then listen to them again and again and again. And then you're brainwashing yourself for success. And if you take all of these steps that I've shared with you on this episode, and you commit to, you don't need to have all of the answers, but if you go and take action on these amazing lessons that have taken me not only a long time, but a lot of pain, suffering, and effort to, to be sharing them with you, I'm saying that because I want you to know that they're incredibly valuable. And if you take that home and you integrate and you apply it, this could truly change your entire life, the entire trajectory of your life but also of your destiny. And that is priceless. This can literally be worth so much for you. So if this resonates with you, I want you to tap into your inner fire. I want you to tap into your confidence and say, if he could do it, I can do it as well. I'm not special. I just discovered, combined and compiled and blended different tools and experiences and lessons. And I truly want to say that I feel incredible. I, I never thought that I would feel like this in my life, where I would wake up basically every single day and whatever I want to achieve, I immediately, there's no procrastination, there's no resistance. There's nothing in my mind that's telling me I cannot do this. I execute immediately and I feel super blessed, super fulfilled and happy. And I'm saying this, because I want you to know that this is possible for you as well. Not only is it possible, I believe that this is something that you deserve. This is something that you own to yourself to tap back into your natural state of being and become freaking limitless. That's what this podcast is all about. And really my mission and, and my intention for a lifetime is to help you tap into your limitless potential into a new realm of unlimited possibilities because it's real my friend it's freaking real and you can do this this is going to wrap it up for this video for this podcast thank you so much for tuning in i appreciate your presence if you want to support the podcast and help us reach more people with this message go to the link in the description of this podcast and leave us a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts. This is going to help us so much with the algorithm and we're going to be able to be pushed out to more and more people that need this message. That's going to wrap it up for me today. It's a pleasure having you here. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next week again.